So here we are, part three of the week two tutorial for Web Publishing One uh, at Tri C Spring 2012. Uh, when we last paused at the end of part two, I said we'd be back in a minute, but the truth is it's been a little bit uh, a little bit more time than that. So here's what happened: my head was starting to hurt after doing all those tutorials, and I decided to take a little break, and I went down and I. Um, Oh, you know, had a little bit of a snack and some hot chocolate and read a little bit, and now I'm back at it. So I'm mentioning that just because I think that it's a good idea that when you get to the point where you're starting to feel maybe a little frustrated with the work, um, maybe a little stressed out, just take a break, even if it's only 10 or 15 minutes. Do something else. Um, you know, do something hopefully that you enjoy, and then come back to it. And I think that you'll feel a lot better. And it just gives your brain a rest and also gives your eyes a rest. Uh, when you're working on the computer, it's a good idea to take a break about every hour just and then look around at things that are farther away just to give your eyes some relief. So, that said, let's get going again. I'm hoping to wrap things up in this last 15-minute segment. Um, if not, we may have to go on, but I'm going to try and wrap things up. So I'm going to try, hopefully, to move a little bit more quickly. Uh, we are now on page 49 in the textbook. And please, please read the textbook because I'm glossing over some things that they explain probably better than I do in the tutorial. So between the book and the tutorial, you should get what you need to know. So on page 49, what they want us to do is make this into a clickable email link which, wow, wouldn't that be great if you clicked on it, something happened. So here's how you do it. Before the text that says mike at gmail.com, or whatever it might say, you put an A tag, which stands for anchor. You use an attribute name of href, which is hypertext reference. You don't have to know all these, but it might help if you understood it. Equals, and then you put a very specific thing in here. You put mail to colon, no space, and then actually the email address itself, which we already have. But we want to use, um, we want this to be the text that appears on the website. So we really need to repeat it. So we want to mail to Mike. And actually, you know what? It's going to be much smarter. Let me just copy this. Copy it, Command C, paste it, Command V. Um, and then I'm going to close the quote mark, close that A tag, ahref, mail to mike at gmail.com. And then I'm going to close the A tag here with a slash A. And what you notice we've done is we've made this a link that's going to open the email program and send it to mike at gmail.com. And this is the text that we're going to see. So let me show you. I'm going to save it, go back here reload and you notice this is now a clickable link. It doesn't have to say mike at gmail.com. This text can say anything it wants because we actually have the email address here in the A tag. So this could say, let me see, email me at and if we wanted to not show people the email address, I'm not sure why, but you could just do this. Email me at this address. Save and reload and you can see the difference. So this is the text. So it's between those two opening and closing A tags is the text that appears in the browser. This is mail to is telling it actually the email address itself. So those could be both the same or they could be totally different. All right, so that's page 49. Let's see what else we want to do. Oh, they say, well, let's put in a picture because it's really boring so far. Well, okay, let's do that. Um, and I'm going to put in a picture. I have one of my own that I got specifically to do this. And I'm going to put it here um, right in the paragraph where I talk about give my tagline. And the way you put a picture in is you use the image tag, IMG. Now image has several different attributes and they're all important. So SRC is image source. So SRC equals, and now you have to say where is, or what is the name of that file? So I'll show you what I did. Um, here in my web folder, my week two folder, 
There's my index. And you notice I've got a small image called AW75PX. That's telling me how big it is, 75 pixels, jpg.jpg, which is one of the acceptable files you can use on the web. So I'm going to put that in there, image source. And to be safe, always better to copy and paste if you can rather than retyping. So I'm just going to copy and paste this entire thing. Command C. Go over here after image source quote. Paste it in there. Close quote. And that takes care of that. And images also have a height and width. In this case, I know my height equals 75. Oops, I need the quote marks there. 75. And the width equals quote 75. And 75 automatically means 75 pixels. So we have a source, a height, a width, and the last thing we're going to put in here is what's called ALT, which stands for ALT text, alternative text. And this should actually describe what the photo is. So it's going to be a photo of Al in a red shirt. So we'll talk in class more about why this is important. But for now, just take my word for it. And we're going to do what's called self-closing the tag, which some of you were talking about in terms of meta tags. So here's a meta tag, and it's self-closing with that slash. Image tag is the same way. And again, we'll talk about that in class, why that's important. All right, so here's my alt text, space, closing slash, closing bracket. And you notice as soon as I did that, watch the color change. So before I close that, uh, the word my is in green. Once I close it, my is black. So And that's what it should be because it's actual text. All right, so let's see what happened now. I put in my image, save that, go back here, and reload. Boom, there it is. Okay, so... Um, we'll talk much more about images in the future, but for now, there's an example of how to put an image in. Obviously, it can be any image, any size. Um, needs to be either JPEG, .jpg, a ping file, .png, or a GIF, .gif. Those are the three formats that will work on the web. All right, that takes care of 49 and page 50. And let's see, now we're going to go into 51 where it talks about adding structure. And now this is um, really important stuff and probably it's not going to make a lot of sense at first because you're going to wonder why the heck are we doing this. So I'll explain a little bit about why. Uh, again, it still may not make a whole lot of sense yet, but believe me, it's going to make a lot of sense in just a week or two. So for now, take my word for it. Uh, so the tags we've been using, we have body, we have HTML, we have P for paragraph, we have H2, H3. We're going to start using another tag, and that tag is called a div. It's D-I-V. Um, D-I-V is a tag that is used to divide the page, uh, hence the DIV, into different areas. And what we're going to do is set up some areas that we're going to work with. Um, and at the moment, we're not going to do much with them, but we will very soon. So what we're doing is doing some prep work. And then in um, a week or so, we're going to start putting those things to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up some divs, and then I'm going to use comments to help me remember what I'm doing here. So if you look at this, we'll go back at the page. This section here uh, that's got the H1, it's got my photo, it's got the tagline, is often referred to um, in the web design biz as a header. Uh, and actually, ultimately, it's going to look a lot different than this, but we're going to call it a header. So we're going to use div to identify this as a header. So what I'm going to do is go here, div, and inside the header, I want to have this and the photo and the tagline. So the end of the header is going to be here. Okay, so just to show you what we're doing, let me just break this up a little bit. So inside this div, we have the H1, 
we have the paragraph and inside the paragraph we have the image. Now, right now it's just a plain old div and um, we are not, you know, doesn't help too much because we're going to set up other divs. In fact, I'm going to put another div right here and I'm going to put, I think, everything else inside that second div for the time being. So here it is. So now all of this stuff is, this is called wrapping it in a div. So all of this material is wrapped in this div. But it's hard to tell what we have. So let's do something, which is we're going to go to div. We're going to give this one an attribute of ID equals, and let's call it header because that's really what it is. So ID equals header. And now, so that's the opening tag. Here's the closing tag. Just so that I know what that closing tag is, I'm going to put a comment in here with the exclamation mark, hyphen, hyphen, end of header, and then close my comment. Okay, so here's where the header starts. Here's where it ends. This div I'm going to call, give it an ID <coughs> equals main content. And these IDs can't be multiple words. They have to be one word. So we have to say main content all run together like that. Or we could put a hyphen in there to separate it, and that still counts as a single word. You cannot have a space in there. Div ID main content down here. Let me add that comment again to remind me what it is, end of main content. I think I like it with the hyphen main content. So I've got those two divs. Now watch what's going to happen. I'm going to save that, go over here, reload, and not a dang thing happens. Okay, that's the way it's supposed to work because we're setting up these divs so that we can use them later when we start to style this text. But for the time being, they're really not visibly going to do anything. Um, now, again, to follow along with the book, I'm going to do two other divs. And I think that will be about all we need to do. So here's the two other divs. Now one thing that um, you need to understand is ID names can only be used one time per page. So there can only be one header, one main content. Um, ID by definition is only used once. So within this header div, I'm going to actually break out a couple other sections by using divs. And once again, it's not going to look any different, but we're going to be able to do some different things with them later on. So following along the way the book uses it, they call this section site branding. And I'm going to follow my hyphen convention, site branding, because I like the hyphen there. Uh, and within the site branding, we're going to have the H1. And just to make it a little more obvious, let me do that again. We'll have the H1 and we'll have uh, let's see, I think at this point that's all we're going to put within that site branding. So let me close that div and add the comment so that I know what I've got there. End of site branding. And then I since I put my photo in here with the tagline, um, in the book they refer to another div as tagline. So we might as well put that in there. Div oops, ID equals tag line. Close that. And the tagline is going to be my personal adventures in web publishing plus my photo are all part of the tagline. So again, let's close that div and comment that what we're doing is we are now end of tagline. And these comments become very helpful because if we didn't have the comments, what you'd see here is we'd have two div closing div tags in a row and how do we know which one is which? So um, this is where we're going to stop for now. But let me point out what we've done.
we've created some divs and again I'll save this and reload it nothing looks different which is fine because these divs are structural divisions that don't visibly do anything at the moment um, so we've got a div called header there's where it opens and then within that div called header we have a div called site branding which starts there and it ends here and we put the comment in so we know that that's where it ends we're still within the header we've got another div called tagline starts right here down 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 here's where it ends and we put the comment in. we know that's where it ends and now that we've got these two things wrapped now we're going to end the header so div header starts here ends here within it we have site branding starts here ends here and then we have tagline starts here and ends here and we're using the comments to make it obvious then we have another div called main content that starts here everything else is inside of that here's where it ends and then our body ends and then our HTML ends so I think we're gonna call it a day and if you get to this point you're gonna be in real good shape for what's gonna come next as we start to um, work with these divs so right now as I said they're there they're potentially gonna do some good stuff for us but we're not doing anything special with them but very soon we will okay so that's all for now and that should help you get the assignment done please read the assignment description because there may be things in it that I haven't covered in this tutorial because there's a couple of little things I think I'm gonna add but these are all the main techniques you need to do the assignment for week two